Hello and welcome to the week six edition of the Monster Pod brought to you by thelines.com. Matt Brown, Steven Andrus. Joined this week by four for fours, Connor Allen. Sunday night football, Cincinnati Bengals and the New York Giants. This is out to an expensive three and a half or four for the Bengals. 47 and a half is our total. Steven, doesn't look like we're going to get Malik Neighbors back, which is a bit concerning because it's been a while now and uh, him not being able to clear concussion protocol. Certainly, uh, I hate to see that here for this Giants squad. So, you see the movement towards Cincinnati a little bit further, knowing that Neighbors isn't going to be out there. Look, this is an unbelievably awesome offense. If you look, you get, you take out the adjusted EPA numbers. Burrow's number one in the NFL. They're the number three overall offense in the NFL. There's all kinds of stuff. We, we don't have to talk about that. It's just the deficiencies on the defensive side. Is it going to be too much for them to win at margin? I don't know if we're thinking outright Giants upset here over this this Cincinnati team, but you know, look, we are asking for the other side of three. We are asking for a win at margin. And when your defense cannot stop anybody, that is sometimes tough to do. I do think we've underrated the Giants in the trenches so far this year. I think their O-line and D-line has been really impressive. I think there's a, a stat out there for called Havoc Rate. The, the, the Giants D-line is top two in this year. So uh, the, the Bengals have a good offensive line here this year. So that's going to be mitigated in this matchup. To me, it was an over. Um I had to cash out a bet earlier in the week when Malik Neighbors was a surprising DMP. I thought he would have been back by now from the concussion. Clearly looks like he's going to miss another game. So this total has been coming down a little bit with Malik Neighbors likely to miss. We're at 47 and a half right now. If this, I think it maybe ticks down another half point when the news becomes official with Malik Neighbors. If so, that's what I'm betting back in on the over at 47 at kind of a keyish number. I mean, the Bengals are a dead over team, Matt, to your point. I mean, there is no maybe I don't know maybe the commanders but <laughs> there is no wider <laughs> gap right now between offense and defense with it with the with the Bengals right now with how good their offense is and how bad their defense has been and the Giants if you're looking for a partner for an over have been a surprising offense I mean if you take out the week one game where Daniel Jones was embarrassed by Brian Flores in the in the Vikings defense who also embarrassed a couple other really good quarterbacks this year this Giants offense is actually above average by advanced metrics from week two onward. And it has been largely because of the passing game with Daniel Jones, with Brian Dable calling plays. And it was still fairly impressive last week without Malik Neighbors. So I got to give him credit for that. So I, I think this is a pretty, I'd be surprised if this game doesn't end in the fifties, even without Malik Neighbors. I just think yeah. it's a dead over team. Yeah. It's just the, the tough part for me to back Cincinnati is just that, it's one team that has a good coach against one team that doesn't. And so it's like that always bothers that that always bothers me where it's like, I think Cincinnati obviously is the better team. And it's certainly this offense should be able to score at will. But with that, do I think that Zach Taylor is going to be smart enough to figure out how to keep this lead and win at margin and all this stuff like that? And I have much more confidence in Matt, than I do. But Matt, the Bengals had a players only meeting this week. Surely that will it, fix they, the defense. They did. They did. It, what What do you say in there? And you go in and you just go like, everything we do is terrible. Like, look at all this. Like, what do you like? What do you what do you, what do you start screaming? Like, I mean, what do you even do? It's just like we don't do anything well. So uh, yeah, we got to fix everything. Uh, uh, yeah, play cool. better. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Connor, what do you see here in uh, Cincinnati and the Giants? This, this is another tough game because I think you guys brought up a lot of good points here. We also saw Tyrone Tracy break out um, last week uh, in a bigger role here. And I think it's another, you know, awesome matchup for him if, if mm -hmm. you know, if that pans out specifically. Um, we also saw Theo Johnson play a much bigger role without uh, Malik Neighbors. Wandale Robinson, you know, is still there. It's all these guys. I, I think people forget and something heading into the season that I thought was interesting. is like Brian Dable carried like a corpse of a team to the playoffs and a, and a wild card win just two years ago uh, and just because they had like a horrible season last year with like literally no one uh, on their team and even worse team last year. Now I think people are forgetting that if you give them a little bit of talent, a little bit of scheme and a good matchup, like he can make a lot of things work and make things easy for Daniel Jones. And Daniel Jones played pretty well too. He still isn't driving the ball fully off his back foot. He's missing. He's like under throwing guys deep downfield, but um, I mean, he's played fine. He's played pretty well for the most part as Steven laid out here. So uh, am I playing the Giants at plus three and a half? Probably not, or plus four? Probably not. But I think that the over angles is really interesting here because, I, again, I have very little faith in, in either defense. There's there's props to be had here. I just don't know exactly where to go with this. Like, 
one of the Giants guys is going to have good stats because it's just this Cincinnati defense isn't going to magically figure it out in a week. So there's that. Maybe it's Wandell Robinson who has like always has like eight catches for 14 yards somehow. Yeah. Like there's there's always that. Like, you know, PPR, like some somehow he like he like works out in PPR fantasy leagues and you're going, like, what the hell? He had like 21 yards. How does he have 11 yeah. points? He had 21 yards. Whatever. It's like, yeah. It's, what is, are, is the same game parlay software figuring that out yet? Because that's an inverse correlation over receptions under yards on Wandale Robinson. <sighs> Well, they put his yards so low. His yards are like <laughs> last yeah. week. His, his prop was like forty-two, and his reception prop was six and a half. Like, how is that even possible? Like, it's like gold tail uh, on steroids. Oh, uh, it's so great. Yeah. I, I mean, just it's it's funny, but uh, a very interesting game. Like I said, I mean, it would be Cincinnati or pass for me. I just don't know if I can get to the to the window with the with the ticket for sure on that one. Uh, guys, everything we do absolutely free. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Do appreciate that. If you have not checked out 444 and all that Connor and team over there are doing, you got to go over there, get in on that. Not just sports betting. I know this is a sports betting podcast. They got your fantasy needs as well. So don't give up yet. It's only week six. I know it sucks. You're looking at your your team and going like, I have no chance because all my guys are injured. Well, guess what? Other people have injured people, people too. So they'll help you figure all this out over there at 444. Four. If you haven't done so already as well, lines.com, upper right-hand corner absolutely free discord you can go in there and chat all sports all season long for connor for steven i'm matt good luck on all your week six bets